So recently, to everyone's surprise, including my own, I tweeted this out. Going on a date, if I die, please take care of my non-existent cat, dog, and goldfish. I'm counting on you. I appreciate all the hundreds of people saying that they would take care of my non-existent cat, dog, and goldfish, but also all the people, of course, who wished me luck on my date. I had this picture of me here. I looked pretty good, I thought, with the light behind me and whatnot. Really showed off my eyes there. Following on from this, I said, didn't die, had a really great night. I don't think I've ever vibed with someone this well before. Really surprising, honestly, considering how it happened. My sister works with her. She asked me about giving her my number when she was over picking up stuff. Guess I owe her one. So how did this happen? Basically, as you guys know, I've always been sort of hesitant to get back into dating, even though it has been quite a long time since I bothered with that kind of stuff. It's just difficult for me to meet people because of my career, what I do for a living, of course, it's very solitary. And I never really felt lonely. Didn't feel like a uh, feel like there was a huge need to go the effort to find someone. Like obviously, I re- I recognize that having a person in your life that you vibe with and, and you can do stuff with is a is a great blessing. It's just I always thought it'd be too much effort to you know go through the hundreds of bloody likes that I have on OK Cupid or whatever and, and find someone who's actually a real person and not a, not a boss or just a person from another country looking for a, you know looking away over here whatever it is yeah, that, that kind of stuff. I, I just didn't want to go the the hassle considering that I uh I have so much work that I need to do every day. But my sister was over here picking up some stuff. So whenever I have stuff that I don't want, I give it to my sister these days. She either uses it herself or sells it. And I had an elliptical machine downstairs. You know, one of those things where you, you, know, you pull the things and you move your legs. You know, an exercise thing. I got a new exercise bike, so I didn't need it and said, hey, if you got a ute or something, come pick it up. So she picks that up as well as like my valve index and stuff and all this other stuff I didn't need that she can either use again or sell. She gave the elliptical to her friend who lives in her building as well. And um, while she was over, she says to me, "Ah, oh, um, I, I have a, a friend who is is into you and and wants uh, wants your number because I was telling them about you and and, and they're looking to, to hook up with someone and you know you came up and they're interested and I was like, like, what are the odds that this wouldn't just be a waste of my time? I was really hesitant with the idea. She's like, no, 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 she's she's attractive and she's smart and you like her, trust me. And even then I was like, eh, you know, but I got so much work to do. And she's like, look, 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 she's dated a, a Twitch streamer before. Turned out to be some Brazilian guy, so some not anyone that I know. And I was like, well, I mean, she, if she's dated a Twitch streamer before, it, it, it turns out she doesn't super care much about gaming and stuff, but she understands the life of a streamer, someone in this career. So I was like, oh, well, that's, that's an interesting thing. I, I don't think I've ever had the opportunity to meet and potentially date someone who has dated a Twitch streamer before. It's like, oh, yeah, why not? Why the fuck not? Just take a day and uh, we'll see how this goes. I mentioned on stream that this date had been set up. Yeah, I was, I was, ve- I was like, I, I, what are the odds that this would actually end up working out? But honestly, it really did end up working out. I don't want to mention her name because of weirdos on the internet who will harass her, obviously. But she seemed perfectly willing to set up what we were going to do on our date. And it, it seems to be a thing that she really vibes with because she apparently knows so much about Sydney. Like she knows all the cool spots, all the things that you can do. And she was like, do you want to know where we're going? And I was like, eh, you know, you can tell me or not. It doesn't matter. She's like, but you do you like surprises? And I'm like, you know, tell me or not, or not, whatever you think is better. And so she doesn't tell me. And I, I go and we went go-karting, not just not outside, but like indoor go-karting. It was like on top of a, a parking garage and it was really fun. <laughs> Like, it has like a boost button and stuff, and like I'm just flying around, just like, like, skid- like you, you kind of just like drift around the corners, just going at full speed. And uh, I, I think I got like 9th out of 20th or something in terms of top time. And so it's not like insanely good, but it was my first time ever doing it. I really enjoyed it. The only bad part was whenever you, whenever you catch up to someone and they'd be in front of you and they stop you being able to go really fast. Like, I'm sure they have days where just like only the expert people can ride so that, that they're all going at top speed to get the best times and stuff. But regardless, it was still very, very fun. And then we went to get some food and she also knows a lot about food. And so we we end up going to this uh, little Italian place and I joked like about getting a pizza, but I always get pizza. So I ended up getting a salmon salad and she gave me so much shit for it. Cause she's like, this is like the whitest thing you could possibly could have picked on the menu. And she was right. And it wasn't even a good salad. And uh, she speaks like five different languages and, and she, she's like conversing with the waiter about, about all these different types of food because she loves cooking and so she knows all these different things and she, uh, she gets me to try like some zucchini cheese puffs or something. And they were actually quite good. Not that I'm, I'm, I don't really, you don't think I like zucchini, but I, I, I really did like it. And there was, the other thing we got was like a, I can't even remember, like it was like a, it's like a, a white thing on, on like 
a bunch uh, a bunch of prosciutto in the white thing was like mozzarella cheese. You know what I'm talking about? Like it was very it was very fancy and it, it tasted nice and stuff. And uh, it, it, like uh, I was really impressed with her knowledge of, of such things. And yeah, so so the meal was great. And I mean, we're, we're just vibing the entire time. I think in the entire time, the entire night, there was like maybe like a five minute period where we weren't just yapping to each other about everything under the sun. After that, we ended up going to uh, a whiskey bar, something that I had been invited to in the past, but I had never gone to in part because I thought it would just be whiskey, but it was whiskey and bourbon. And I, I'm not hugely against whiskey, but I prefer bourbon. And, you know, because she's in the know, she knows all these places. She's like, this is like a hidden bar that only people in the know know. And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. It's just going to be some some nice place or whatever. But it was actually like, like it's like a, a, a dark tunnel, like in between two buildings. And then on the other side, there's like just three fancy looking types of bars. I, I don't know if they were all whiskey bars because we only went into one of them. But I was like, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, how can these businesses survive given how like off the road that they are? That you just have to happen to know that these are here. But apparently it's like a, a culture of people who are really into like high quality alcohol. And, and like these places are like so fancy and well known that like bartenders like fight to, to, to serve alcohol here. Like, these, these are people who are like passionate about alcohol. So there's a huge menu on the on the board and it tells you the prices of all these like different types of whiskey and, and bourbon. It's like a 30 year old vintage, a, a 10 year old, and, and it's got all these fancy names from all over the world. There's Japanese whiskey and Scottish whiskey and all this jazz. And and there's there's like a small like thimble of some whiskey there worth like 500 bucks. And uh, I wanted something expensive, but not ridiculously expensive. So I got myself like a, it was like $120, I think, the the one glass I had. And it was like this much. It was like a shot and no, no mixer. Like, I think if I had asked the guy for Coke mixed with the whiskey, he probably would have punched me in the face. <laughs> I do think it was bourbon, not just whiskey, but whatever. But when I asked the dude for recommendations, he's like, let me tell you something. And he brings out a bottle and he's showing it to me. And he's like, this bottle, how it was made, it, the, the 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 way the casts are made in, in the heat and stuff, they contract and you can't have the whiskey over a certain amount of years because the, the, the keg leaks into it. He's telling me like the backstory of like how the guy died who first made this type of whiskey and why it became so popular because he died in, in somehow related to it being made. In, he's, he's showing me as a Japanese bourbons and whiskeys. I'm like, this is, this is crazy. And this guy is just so passionate about the history of every one of these drinks. The walls, I, I shoot you or not, the walls are just covered in every conceivable possible shape and size of drink you've ever seen. They have like a ladder, like you have at a library where you like you, you do the ladders that just move along and they, they take stuff down. And it, it's so crazy. And they, they were playing like, you know, like Elvis. And uh, it, it, from, from like, I don't know, but when was, when was Elvis popular? Like a hundred years ago? <laughs> no, not actually a hundred years ago, but it, it was just a very interesting vibe of a place. And you just have to be in the know to know of this place. And it's like a culture that I just never seen before. And, and so we just chilled there for a bit and, and had, a, had some drinks. Like she doesn't care about whiskey. She went there mainly because of me, right? And um, yeah, it was nice. And then, then we ended up going to another bar because this is, this is really late at night at this point. It might be like 11, 12 p.m. I, I didn't really look at the time. Like the time just flew by. So we went to her favorite bar. But one of the reasons she likes it is because I, like, I don't want to talk about her ethnicity and stuff because people online will find her and harass her and stuff. But it, it was more ethnically her thing and it was uh it was it was a great great place as well we had uh some cocktails and we just chatted because she lives in the city we went back to her place and, and it was really good as well i debated whether i wanted to stay because it, like it was it was like it was like 4 a.m <laughs> by the time you we were done or whatever and i i i actually ended up going home because i had to get up this morning and do stuff and like i, I live like an hour away with uber but uh i i i, I still think it was probably the right choice but uh, it was a really really fun night and, and, and interestingly, I think we might just do it every week. And that seems to be the plan currently. She, she seems to surprisingly perfectly match what I kind of want in another person. It's just, just really funny. <laughs> it's interesting how much we are clearly very different people, but we vibe in just the right ways and complement each other in such perfect ways. It's like a yin and yang kind of thing. Yeah, no, no. So I hope it works out. I, I think I'm really lucky, you know? I'll obviously be seeing you again in, in a week and... Uh, She'll pick out, hopefully, some other cool place for us to go. And uh, it was a good experience. So I do owe my sister one, basically. She always helped me out, surprisingly. Opposites attract. But the thing is, I don't think we're really opposites. We're opposites in some ways, but we we, we similar in others. But she's just really smart. And she knows so much about the things that I know the least about. Does she watch my stream? No, she, she knows nothing about GTA and stuff. 
and, and has no interest in it, and that's totally cool. She said she checked out one one or two of my videos, and she was just like, I, th I think, what was the one she was talking about? Um, she saw, saw the shorts where it's talking about how to survive falling in a car. You always survive, but in a bike, you either have to land on your back tire or you, you land by holding the radio. And she says this to me, and she's like, I'll never forget that information, and I just don't care about it. I have no reason to know any of this stuff. Yeah, I, I think I prefer it that way, that she doesn't watch my content, honestly. I always worry that someday I just end up dating a fan or something and somehow taking advantage of them because you know, the power imbalance or, or whatever and all that jazz. It, it just felt it felt manipulative to potentially just date a fan. Finding someone who likes me, surprisingly likes me, without having really any connection or interest in the work that I do is an interesting experience, you know. Yeah, so surprising success and a surprising turn of events in my life. And so I guess we'll see how far that goes. What a strange turn of events. Unfortunately for you guys, apparently it's not going to majorly impact the content that I make because it will just be a one a week thing. She's got her own stuff going on and so do I. This means I might have a few more stories of stuff that I can uh, talk about. Although of course I will still need to keep her as anonymous as possible because of the really, really deranged people who have been pouring through my life recently. But anyway. Stop! Now that I have your attention, hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you. I wish you all the best.